have things to look at. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, this is a bit of an improvised one, obviously, because I had no intention of talking, mainly because I didn't really know what bar camps were all about. So, um, I kind of call myself a bit of a geek, like not a full on programmy, tacky geek. I didn't have to do any of that. But I kind of like geeky things. So, a bit of a geek. So, today I thought I'd just talk about how I kind of created my own job role where I work to align with what I like doing, which is being a bit of a geek, really. So, um, just a very brief kind of context. I work for a company that does education around sustainability in the event industry, and I was originally going to talk about how to run events in a sustainable way. Actually, this event is a really good example of it, and I kind of thought all I'd be doing would be saying, look around you. So, I think I'll change the title of the talk slightly. So, um, I just thought I'd talk about how I created my job. So, at first, I basically went on board as someone who did a lot of networking with people, delivering education, um, kind of creating resources around sustainability for the event industry. And on paper, it was literally my perfect job. Like, I used to be a teacher, I'd worked in a sustainable venue, um, I'd volunteered for Friends of the Earth, so I had loads of kind of sustainability background. And then when I actually came to do it, I don't know, something just wasn't right. And I, was, I did it for about seven months or so. And was miserable, I was having to travel a lot and live out of a suitcase, which didn't really suit me. I just kind of settled down with my little cats and everything. So, like, you know, I wanted a bit more kind of stability and consistency. Um, one kind of small aspect of my role had been on my kind of second day during the company uh, to be, uh, oh, by the way, could you also like, make the website happen? <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> so we're a really small business. At the moment, there's four, uh, five permanent members of staff. So we're really small, um, pretty kind of innovative in terms of just trying stuff. Uh, I'm really lucky to have a managing director who's really kind of open-minded about ideas and who also gives people a lot of responsibility. So here's me, day two of my job, can you just make a website for the company, please? Um, you know, so they basically, they've got the ball rolling, they've spoken to some kind of developers in Manchester um, who were going to build a website using WordPress, the help quote, they didn't even have a domain name or anything, so it was just kind of like, yeah, if you could just do that, that's great. Um, could you also just also make this online education course as well. That was fantastic. So I was like, yeah, I have absolutely no formal background in computers or website development or anything. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, so that was one of the kind of areas of my jobs, was liaising with developers and helping to build this WordPress website. Um, I, I, I know this is a very small community, so I shan't name names about the developers. I'm good friends with them. However, there were certain limitations in terms of getting things done, shall we say? Um, which meant that I basically had to learn how to use WordPress a little bit myself, learn sort of basic HTML myself, just basically kind of teaching myself various bits and pieces. Um, similarly, with the online course that I was helping to develop, that was with Leeds Met Uni. Again, academics, apologies to any academics in the audience, you're not the fastest reading of people sometimes. Um, so again, there was a lot of kind of initiatives that needed to be used in terms of developing that. So here's me, seven months in. I've gone to some kind of weekend personal development kind of course where there's a lot of reflection and looking at your life and what you want to do. And after that, I sat down on the bus and was like, I'm sorry, it's just, I, I'm not happy. I love the company, I love the way of working, I love the autonomy it gives me, I love the flexibility, but I'm not happy. And this is basically what I wish everyone in the whole world could experience. My boss said to me, oh, well, other aspects of your job that you do like? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I like doing the kind of slightly geeky stuff. You know, I, I really enjoyed learning a little bit more about using WordPress. I really enjoyed kind of innovating around things, um, creating these websites. And she said, well, do you want to just do that then? And I went, okay. <laughs> and she said, also, I've been meaning to say for a while, we're really pleased with the work that you have done so far on this, so would you like some more money? And I went, <laughs> okay. And I thought, well, I don't want to push my work too much here, but it has been on my list of things that I wasn't happy with. But, you know, say we're a flexible working company, but actually I'm not sure how flexible we are. I'd, I'd like to work from home a lot more. I'd recently moved out to the Peak District and I was in Manchester, so it's getting quite expensive on the train. 
So I'd like, I'd like to work from home a bit more and work more flexible hours if that's possible to shielding myself and sure. Okay, yeah, you can just try that for the company and report back on how it works. So that was me going in and thinking, I'd, I'd pre written my resignation letter and everything, and I came out with doing the aspects of my job that I loved for more money and in a more flexible way. And I was just like, this is the best resignation ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so I was really fortunate in that sense. And from then, one of the challenges was all of my colleagues obviously have been used to me working on this other role, but all of a sudden a lot of things had changed. The job I was doing had changed, where I was working from, where I was working from had changed. So after a few weeks, we kind of felt like there was this slight jarring in the team. So my boss and I sat down and we're like, right, we're going to have to do a bit of a PR role on the job and its benefits. Because beforehand, we hadn't had anybody who was the kind of geek in the company. We hadn't had a technological development role. I don't have a job title, I make it up depending on the circumstance, because I do so many different things. I kind of err towards systems development until unless I'm talking to real geeks, in which case I'm like, oh, okay, um, <laughs> maybe not then. Um, but yeah, so basically, like kind of showing people there's a need for it. So basically, every time someone asks me if I could do something, I have to say, yes, of course, that's not a problem. And I also used some technology to help make your life easier. And that was how we sold it to everybody. Um, so it's kind of developed. I've been doing that for about a year and a half now. And, it, and the roles keep being developed. I've gone from full time to part time, back to full time again, just in terms of other commitments and other things that areas of interest in my life. So it's been really flexible. Um, and you know, it was great because all I had to do was, was A, have the guts to say, something isn't working, but I want to stay with the company and B, have the guts to ask a bit more and say, look, this is, this is what I think could happen, this is how I think we can make it work, and then develop it from there. So what I do now, and again, it's basically making it up as I go along, like I did with the job role, most of my job is winging it, but I love it because I love overcoming challenges. So um, we've, we've got the website up and running. Um, within my kind of WordPress ability, I've got inches of its life to make it do what I want to do. The developers go, oh, no, that's possible. I bring them up the next day and go, I figured out how to do it, by the way, in a really workaround way. And actually, one of the advantages is, because I'm not a programmer, hardcore geek person who really understands the kind of intricate ways of working and what they call the kind of scripts behind it, I can often see the, the solutions that are a bit more obvious. That makes sense. So I might get in touch with them and go, I've got this problem. And they're like, okay, well, we might need to rethink the PHP and the Java and the CSS. And I'm like, okay, um, we could just do this thing, which would take five minutes and cost me money. And then we've gone, oh, yeah, yeah, that's. But it's, it's too obvious for them. They're not, you know, they, they think of everything in the context of the, the kind of script and development stuff. So if you are somebody who is doing development stuff, then it's quite nice to have an external perspective who can sometimes, you know, cut out a few steps and see wood for the trees, I suppose. Um, I, I don't always get it right. I break stuff and they shout at me sometimes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't always work. Um, one of the main challenges that I had was with a, a kind of online software tool that we had. And we were having loads of problems, loads of bugs, and the developers said, it's because of your hosting. If you move it to our hosting, then we'll be able to fix it more easily. In the process of moving it to their hosting, they broke it beyond repair. And so we had this product that we sold to clients that we just couldn't use anymore. Um, so as an interim solution, we do a lot of stuff on Google Apps and using Google Sites and stuff. Um, so I was like, oh, well, you know, I could just use some Google questionnaire forms and embed them on a Google Site. and and then take the data from there. And boss said, yeah, do it, we'll just need an interim solution. And actually, turns out, all our clients much preferred <laughs> the, the free and very simple Google Forms option, because like, it just makes sense, we can use it. It's not got really complicated features. Um, so now that's actually what we're using, and it's not gonna be a long-term solution. But again, if I had been more of a geek, then I probably, would have delved into more kind of scripty solutions, had it been less of a geek, I'd have gone, oh, panic, we need to pay someone loads of money to fix it. So that's why I kind of really enjoyed being positioned as a bit of a geek um, within my job. 
uh, to, to kind of do that. Um, and if, you know, it gets to the point where I'm like, okay, this is beyond my knowledge, I need to find someone else or some, some other way of approaching it. And one of the reasons I've come along today is to just kind of see what other people do and kind of, you know, get contacts for doing for future development and find out about new learning opportunities because, you know, I do still want to learn more. I do want to learn more about different areas of technology and I don't even know what I want to learn more about yet. But, it, you know, kind of by talking to people and seeing how they've approached problems and overcome challenges and stuff. That's kind of what I'm hoping to get from today. Um, and I do still work flexibly and I do work um, four days from home and one day in the office, whenever I want to, it's it's brilliant. Um, and yes, I'm just kind of, that's just a little potted, potted summary. Um, and I think I've probably got loads of time left, so if there's any questions, then yes. <laughs> um, I, so I was going to kind of, we all talk geeks, um, and there, there's a lot of geeks, and I, I guarantee you, you are a geek. Yeah. <laughs> because um, everyone kind of thinks of geeks as being technologists or coders, and mm. you know, you could be a music geek, you know, you could be really into music, you know, to a level that most people are like, whoa, yeah. you, know, you really oh, yeah, I mean, I'm a sustainability geek, yeah. I'm a word geek. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So you are a geek, just Yeah, like, I'm yeah. using, yeah, I suppose I'm using geek in the context of the kind of computer stuff. Mainly, and the reason I say that actually is probably because before coming here, I wasn't really sure what to expect because I was, you know, yes, you've got this capture word of geeks, but I wasn't sure if it was a collection of mainly the kind of hacking computer geek type people who, I think, you know, that would probably be a bit too much for me, and I just don't understand what was happening. Like, I went to the free software talk that uh, Ben was giving downstairs, and, I, you know, loved the idea of open source, but I was just lost in a sea of words there that I didn't have a clue what they meant. But, like you say, if it, if it is, and that's what I found really interesting today, that the talks are really varied, and they're not just about that, and they are about, yeah, just people who are a bit of a geek like me. So that's, that's been really nice, and that's been really kind of um, reassuring, I think. Yeah, just to comment, I guess you have to kind of acknowledge that there's, even for, let's say, the, the technical geeks or the, the programmers or developers or whatever, there's not just the geeks or not just the people who know technology, but there's loads and loads of other mm. different levels. So, for example, I do theoretical computer science, so I, I can, you know, if, if, you, if I try to fix a, a WordPress source, or if I try to fix a PHP, I would, well, I could probably find my way around, but, you know, I, I'm just as lost as other people, whereas I use the word ontologies quite a lot, and, and I do logic, and, and all the developers I know run away screaming. <laughs> it really, and, and, it, and even on that level, you have people who, you know, are quite focused on the one thing they do together. You know, um, C-sharp developers, or the .NET developers, who, who really focus on their own framework, they would be one that are really good at that. But if you throw some other stuff at them, they might just go, oh, no. Yeah. So, so it's kind of, once you get into that, you, you, you see there's just so many nuances and so many so many differences, and you can just find your own niche in, in yeah. where you say, well, I know some things that other people might not know, yeah. um, and, and I'm pretty sure you know you know how to set up Google Sites. I, I, I'm sure there's lots of developers who spend quite a lot of time. Uh, and I might just ask you to set it up because it's faster. Mm -hmm. So so you know you, you can you can sort of carve out your little. Niche, you don't yeah, and I was really intrigued about how it was going to work today in terms of, yeah, because it's such a broad term, how everyone, how it all work together in terms of the talks and everything, so it's really interesting. How do you maintain a relationship with developers? I mean, I'm probably like a similar level of you, but sometimes I feel like I'm doing something dirty with kind of you. Know, <laughs> <laughs> There was a reason behind what both of us were saying. We were kind of like, mm, okay. Um, but then, you know, like, I asked about his daughter and I said, oh, let's meet up for a coffee. And I think having that human level allows you to have maybe those kind of sticky moments and get past them. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have to be meeting for drinks, it doesn't have to be, but it's just actually finding out about them, you know, what, who they are as a person as well as a developer. 
has really helped. And I think that's where the difference between the two sets of developers, the ones who broke our tool, compared to the <laughs> ones who are quite patient with me when I break the website, I think it is that. Because I've you know, kind of worked with them since the beginning yeah. and they've got to know them and you know, I've been to their offices. I don't know, I don't know you might be to have somewhere else, but like, you know, just just little little things. And like they send us Christmas presents, they send us a little hamper of nice things, which then makes us love them. So we easily write them. Exactly. It has to be more reasonable and work with developers and kind have of a fair amount of face time with them. Yeah. Whereas at the moment they're not like necessarily co-located with me. Yeah. And things tend to get the non license be a team as well. So I think that makes it harder to sort of have that sort of one to one level understanding of what you're both trying to achieve. Yeah, and I think just I mean that's one of the things that even after three years of working with these guys that we're still working on getting really clear at the start of the project. Because one of the issues, one of the reasons we had to have the sticky conversation was because what they thought was a change, I didn't think was a change. And, and it was really, you know, if we just said, okay, this is what constitutes change at the start, we wouldn't have needed to have that conversation. I mean, we've got the complication of we work with partnership organisations as well. And so when they start coming in, and then some, all of a sudden I'm on holiday and they're speaking to the developer, requesting loads of things we haven't got budget for. No, I have to fix this now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think, for, for me, what the main thing would be, Clarity at the start, and in you know, and but also having that kind of human, you know. I think it's really like, well, if I can do stuff myself, I want to do it. If it's quite hard for me to actually say no, actually, that's fair. Yeah. It's kind of like letting go of it. Like for me, because like the way the skills is organised has changed. I'd say just talk to them as well, and uh, you know, I'm sure them, that you may already have done this, but so I'm really interested in learning more about. This. Yeah. You know, where, what are the areas where I can have a bit of play around? How, you know, is, is there anything that, that, as far as you're concerned, I can have a little go and it doesn't give you too much trouble if it doesn't quite work out? And actually say I'm really interested in, because I was a bit worried at first that they'd think I was trying to take work away from them and that they'd lose out, but they understand that the stuff I'm not going to be able to yeah. do, they know there's work available, but by being a bit more flexible with me, they're actually then kind of making me more endeared to working with them in the future. Yeah, I mean, I've found that myself where, um, I mean, I'm in, in the office, I'm kind of office tacky and that, but oh no, I've no, no formal training or anything, I'm just like, ooh, what's that whole thing there? And that's how I found out. Yeah, it's just yeah. an amazing gift when it comes to the well, Yeah, I mean, and I found when they sent the engineers down, everyone that's in the office has got, oh, it's like a geek, I don't speak to him. Because I'm like, what do you want to do? And I chat with him and half the time I've not got a clue what he's talking about. <laughs> but the fact that I will sit down and talk with him and show an interest. And he's like, more than happy to sit down with me and go through stuff and show me, oh, yeah. you can do this, you can do that. And the amount you learn just by like, sitting down and talking to me. Yeah. You know, so don't be frightened. <laughs> it's cool as a developer hearing that people want to work with this stuff. Because I'm one of the developers that you don't see. If you work with my project manager, if you work with my company, you work with the project manager or the business manager, and they'll be a bar, like, leave it us, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. but, yeah, uh, and then we never really get feedback from the other end. So it's it's um, cool that you want to take the stuff and work with it. And not everyone will be enough. Because people but. phone up and say, we know you're giving us this bit of stuff that we can do ourselves, but can you just change that? Yeah. <laughs> It's just like, well, well, you pay for us to develop it so you can do that bit. See what I mean? So it's nice yeah. to go away and do that. Yeah. Um, I think we've got five minutes left. Can I just ask about your experience with flexible work? Yeah. Yeah. The first one to do it. The first one to kind of push it to the limit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did, you, did you find that there was uh, anything linked from the people who were doing it because mm -hmm. they wanted to do it? Or was it? Um, I mean, one of the things that allowed me to do it was changing my job role. So my role before, I would have struggled a bit more to do flexible working because I had more events that I attended, more meetings that I attended. Um, when I was speaking internationally, obviously there's, there's little flexibility on that if you've got the date to set. Um, and so I think a lot of people realise that because of the nature of their roles, their ability to work flexibly would be a little bit more limited. But I think it's actually made my boss more willing to take on a lot of kind of part-time and remote people. Um, certainly, I think, yeah, I didn't get any kind of negative, I didn't get any kind of jealous type responses from anybody. I think because they were, they kind of saw what I was doing is, 
leading the way for them being able to do it in the future if they wanted to. Um, so it was quite good. I mean, I literally was like, one day I might work from 9 to 5, and one day I might work from 6 p.m. until 2 a.m. or something. I could just play around with it. But what I did do is make sure that I made myself as available as possible to people. So if even if it was a day when I was doing something in the house, around the house or whatever in the project in the day, I'd answer my phone if someone rang, even if I wasn't in the middle of working. I think that helped to kind of smooth the relations a lot. And just being really clear to people and telling people that this is what I'm doing. You can ex a lot of people might expect you like you know to turn on emails. So I just said, look, I will get back to you within 24 hours of receiving your email if it's urgent to phone me. And just made it really clear about expectations. No. Just oh. one thing on flexible working. I mean, you can have flexible work types for everybody. The university I worked for in Germany, everybody had flexible work. I mean, the only thing that was fixed, you had to be in between 9 and 3. Mm -hmm. And everything else could start as early as 6 o'clock and you could stay as long as 6 in the evening. Yeah. Uh, no, as, as uh, 10 in the evening. But you could just, as long as you are there, the I mean, the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And you can always start, if you wanted to introduce it, you could always start with a bigger time, time, core time, and then kind of gradually whittle it down until you've maybe got an hour. And then um, there's a brilliant book called The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. I don't kind of agree with everything in it, but some of the stuff he says, like, you know, just get people into the habit of you not being at your desk, and all of a sudden they didn't they stop bothering you at your desk. You know, he worked around the cafe around the corner, so if needed, he could pop back to the office. But then he basically used that to say to his boss, look, no one's missed me. Why can't I work from some exotic location? Um, <laughs>